Okay, so getting back into our coverage over the Dawn of X era of X-Men comics, we actually pick up with Marauders number 10. Now, with this book right here, we actually pick up at the Port of Genosha, which is a small port on Kakoa. Now, the reason why we pick up at this port is because we actually pick up with Forge. Now, Forge runs this place, and this place, the Port of Genosha, is actually a distillery, where right now the X-Men are trying to make their own kind of whiskey. Now, of course, the first person to taste this new whiskey is Sebastian Shaw, and usually in this series, he is the bad guy, but for right now, he is not because you didn't have Storm appear. And when Storm appears, she does ask Forge a bunch of questions, especially about his old power suit. Because a while back, Forge made a power suit. And that power suit had the ability to cancel out mutant abilities. And so, of course, is Storm saying, Forge, your old idea, your old tech is out there. Did you, I repeat, did you leave any old tech around for somebody to use? And you have Forge say, no, I made sure to delete every single file and get rid of any technology that would help someone make a power suit that could cancel out mutant abilities. And so you have Storm say, well, hey, Russia has that power suit design and they gave it to a bunch of people which we have seen multiple times in this series alone. But then you have Forge say, there's no way they were able to recreate my work without my files. And that is the moment you have Forge realize there is somebody, an old friend of his, who remembers everything. And that friend, his name is Daniel. Now we do jump over to the Quiet Council, where we continue the idea that Emma Frost is not there at the big meeting the Quiet Council is trying to have, because Emma Frost is part of the Quiet Council. And remember, the Quiet Council is a group of mutants that come together to make big decisions on big things that could possibly affect Kakoa down the road as a nation. And so with that, the Quiet Council is wanting to have this meeting, but of course they can't have it because Emma Frost is missing. And you have everyone asking, where in the world is Emma Frost? And you do have one of the Stepford Cuckoos, a clone of Emma Frost, tell the Quiet Council that Emma Frost and the Marauders are right now going to war. And the big question is, war against who? And of course, Russia? Brazil and Manipur because you have the Stefan Cuckoos tell the Quiet Council that basically the Marauders have learned that there was some kind of alliance between the three nations and of course they were working out an idea to kind of make a new kind of power armor that could shut down mutant abilities. And so if all these countries have that power armor for their entire armies, then the mutant race is basically powerless against them. And so it's Emma Frost and the Marauders going to war to hopefully stop these power armor suits from getting out into the world. And of course, the Quiet Council wonders if the meeting should be more about Emma Frost and her team going to war, but then you have Magneto say, no, go ahead, go to war, stop them, but make sure you leave nobody alive. Now, of course, this is the moment you have the Marauders team work together as a way to stop a ship that was right now transporting a nice set of mount of power armor suits that could cancel out mutant abilities. And so really, the next few pages of this book is the Marauders working together as a way to stop this ship. And of course, it's very easy for them because now you're talking about having a lot of powerful mutants who have the ability to stop people with ease. Iceman is one of them. Storm is another. And let's not forget about Emma Frost. She's a very powerful psychic but either way you do have this team of marauders coming together to actually stop this ship from completing their mission on top of that the reason why they attacked this ship is because remember 
Forge said that he had deleted all his old files to make sure that no one would be able to recreate his power suit. But of course, it still happened. And the reason why, because his old friend Daniel. Now, it's not like because his old friend Daniel had betrayed Forge. It's more of like they knew that Daniel knew about how to recreate the power armor suit so they kidnapped him and forced him to help them make the power armor suits but either way forge and the marauders were able to find daniel and free him and so they all leave and the mission is actually completed now, once the mission is completed, you do have Forge and the rest of the team go back over to Kakoa, and we actually pick up with Forge talking to his old friend, Daniel. Now, at first, it's kind of like two people catching up after not seeing each other for a long time, but after they catch up, you do have Daniel realize that he cannot go back home because people will always be hunting for him to force him to make more power armor suits to help fight against against the mutants even though he doesn't want to but then you have forge say yes you cannot go home but on top of that you're about to forget everything you used to know right about now and then you have emma frost appear and use her powers to wipe the mind of daniel so he does not remember how to recreate those power armor suits just in case he is kidnapped by someone else but before we are able to wrap up this story, we do pick up with the five. Now remember, the five are five mutants on Kakoa who have the ability to bring someone back to life. And so with that being said, right now their goal is to try to bring back Kitty Pride. Their problem is though, they have been trying for days now. And every single time they make a new clone of Kitty Pride or some kind of version of Kitty Pride, that person, that version, that clone, whatever, they all die and they keep dying. And so right now, the big question is, why can they not bring Kitty Pride back to life? And that right there leads into another question. Why couldn't Kitty Pride use a Kakoan gate when she was a mutant? And so now another question is being added on top of that about Kitty Pride. But this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know. Your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, I'll see you next time. Later.